So today we're going to be doing South Park Stick of Truth Hasselhoff Percent. In this category, we basically have to get $175 as fast as possible, because then we can get the Hasselhoff skin unlocked for the rest of the game. So starting off, this game has a lot of character customization, and since the timer doesn't start until after we finish creating our character, I make a new character for each run in order to help keep my sanity. After confirming our weird green hair, green shirt customization, we skip the cutscene and immediately need to start making money. We do that by collecting everything we can, in order to sell it at the end. Once we leave our room, we need to go two doors down and get the bathroom collections. We could take a poop here, but that loses time. When we go downstairs, we need to turn left right away, because if we go right first, we'll trigger a cutscene of our dad yelling at us to go play outside, and we'll be kicked out. But after getting all seven collection points in the house, we need to progress the story. We punch this guy beating up Butters, and now Butters is our friend forever. Hey, where are you from? Where'd you live before moving here? Having the main character be silent is brilliant. It's hilarious and makes the game super immersive since I never talked to anyone in real life. He takes us to Cartman's house who's the Grand Wizard King and decides to give us a chance to join his forces. Since we need to get through a few fights, the quickest class for this is Thief, which is basically a pretty standard dagger user with some South Park violence added in. We get through the tutorial fight with Clyde, but then the elf army attacks and we need to win three more fights. Each one teaches us another aspect of combat, of blocking, ranged weapons, and shields. This story-driven tutorial feels very natural, and the slower gameplay isn't a problem since Cartman is our teacher. Oh shit, dude, I think I see blood! Do it, douchebag, kick these elves' asses! Look at your enemy on the ground, weak and helpless! Kick the shit out of him! Being a thief gives us a high base damage on our regular attacks, and this gets us through these fights quickest. After looting the three elves we just defeated, we buy a new dagger, which actually saves time despite costing money, and then we enter Cartman's house and the looting starts again. What's nice about this run is we get to explore a lot of areas we don't normally go in the main story, and this game is filled with jokes and Easter eggs everywhere we go. This is where the magic happens. Last week, Cartman's mom was here with a few men having a whole lot of magic. This is where Cartman does magic. Hmm, smells like the wizard is brewing some potion in here. The last thing we loot in Cartman's house is a garage key here, and then when we exit, we need to loot his garage. Next, we need to go one house to the left and enter Butter's house. Honestly, the hardest part of learning this run is remembering which houses to go into and which ones to ignore. We loot through the house, and something I also love about this run is we get to see all the Easter eggs in the form of items, such as Butter's creamy goo that's found in the bathroom. Butter's creamy goo is chock full of all the essentials an athlete needs. Commitment, compassion, and camaraderie. The Hawaiian ID card found in his room. Take your cards, boys. Apui loa hapa loa. Or even the poop that took a pee book in Butter's living room. His butt was all stinky because he had to poop so badly. We then exit and loot the garage before continuing on to the main story. Here we are introduced to Timmy, who functions as the fast travel mechanic in the game. And then we are quickly ambushed by another group of elves. But this time we have Butters to help fight with us. He is a paladin who has the ability to heal us. Yeah, that's it, little buddy. And then the next part is actually important. We need to make sure we block both of the second attacker's attacks, because if we do, we will get a counterattack. That it does just enough damage to save an entire turn. After Butter one shots three people while we kill no one, our final attack does exactly enough to kill the enemy and saves a turn. That was our last fight, so now we just need to have optimized movement, looting, and we get to see a lot more of the South Park town. But first, we need to finish out the last houses section. We walk past some elves, making sure they don't hit us and start combat. Then, we need to skip the first house and open up the garage of the second house. Next, we need to open up the brown garage and shoot down the attic ladder. We go up the ladder and loot the treasure up above. After that, we make our way past a few more houses until we get to Kevin Stoley's house. He's a Star Trek guy. So this is a good time to mention that we need to be on hardcore mode. We get way more money on hardcore mode that by the end, we have about $50 more than if we were on normal mode. Basically, items cost more in hardcore mode, so they'll also sell for more. So we finished looting up this house, and now we are officially done with houses. And we get to explore the rest of the map, which is way more interesting. Next, we position ourselves right in the middle of these two newspaper dispensers and attack. Money will come out of both with one attack, huge time save. Then we hit the two parking meters to collect a bit more money there. Next, we pass the school, and then we need to avoid these elves. If any of them hit us, the run will be over since it will trigger a battle, which is super slow. But we still need to loot, so we need to run really close to them. Luckily, we don't get hit this time, and the run is still alive. We then travel a bit to the right, and then go into the church. South Park is known for making fun of religions, and the loot found in the church is no exception. Anyway, the next door is the police station, and first thing we do is vandalize a police car to loot the truck. After that, we enter the police station, loot the filing cabinet, go upstairs, then we need to use the bow to knock over this shelf, which will let us go through the vent and get into the evidence locker. There are five lockers to loot, including a key to a jail cell. We take that key downstairs and just release a prisoner. I swear Romper Stomper had a couple more years on his sentence, but you do have the key. 
After that, we leave the police station and run into a group of bullies terrorizing a little girl. We could fight them, but we don't really care about helping the little girl since we're trying to go fast. Plus, there's already a responsible adult watching over. Here we loot City Hall and then make our way to the final area of the map we need and the location of the procedure. We grab the parking meter money along the way, get the treasure behind this random building, and then enter the post office. Loot a drop box, loot the recycling in the back, which includes a goat, and then head to the next building, collecting parking meters along the way. First, we need to get a key from Tom's rhinoplasty. This allows us to enter the building next to it, which has a lot of money in it, and it's very quick to get. Finally, we're faced with a choice. We can either get one more treasure chest or risk it all and try to get the procedure anyway. A lot of the loot has some RNG with how much cash you can get, so you don't always need the last chest. Since I can get an almost world record time, I risk it. I sell all my items, all my equipment, furiously spamming the Y button, and we finally end up with $172.09. Not enough to get the $175 procedure. This is actually a pretty low roll. I'm not even sure if the one extra treasure chest will do it, but we go pick it up, give it a shot anyway. I get back to the receptionist, sell the two items, and literally get to $175.01. I'm super happy that it's enough, and I choose the procedure getting me a 1636, which puts me in third place on the leaderboards. But that's just when the timer stops. Now we can enjoy the full glory of the David Hasselhoff face. From this point on, literally every fight and every cutscene will have this face, and it's just a great addition to the game. This runs a nice deviation from the norm of super hard and precise skips I normally do, but it's fun to play a more for fun speedrun once in a while. But if you do want to see a more difficult run with precise skips, check out my Skyrim speedrun where you need to get married as fast as possible. It's actually pretty difficult. You can't hold out much longer! Help! Somebody! I can't hold out much longer! Help! Ow! 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 Sorry. Yeah, I deserve that. Take that, human! Feel my wrath! Oh, hamburgers! Oh, heck! <laughs> 